our devotion is called honor. 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 So, um, you know, I've never, you know, respect and honor. You probably ought to find your note. I probably ought to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> What'd you go to? I, I did It was on notes. So. <laughs> Go ahead. So the difference between honor and respect, okay, it means, you know, um, honor means to hold in high esteem and distinction. It means also to celebrate. So um, if you think of it this way, honor is something you give someone and respect is something you have for someone. So when you're honoring someone, as a matter of fact, in Scripture, when it speaks about honor, uh, honoring uh, ministry. It's speaking about, it's speaking about the offering, uh, in the new Testament. And it talks about double honor, but, and so what it's saying is you, when you give to someone and whether that's in an offering or whether that's in an award or yeah, whether it's like, in, you know, in the army, uh, or in the armed services, they honor you with medals when you've done an outstanding yes. job. And so, there, you know, think about this because you can have respect for an enemy, but you don't honor them. In other words, when, you know, they're fighting, you may look and you may say, like, you know, during World War II, and they talked about uh, the Japanese and how intense they were and they would not give up it was like they they would get embedded so there was respect for how ferociously they fought but there was no honor given because of what they had done okay does that make sense to you yeah i think so so you give honor to whom honor is due and you know how are there ways to honor others and respect and celebrate right uh romans 12 and 10 says Love one another with brotherly affection. This is in the ESV. And I just like the way it was worded. It says, outdo one another in showing honor. How do you do that? How do you outdo one another in showing honor? And so... I'm going to give you a bigger medal than you give me. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's something that, that God has put in us, you know, to honor. So those that understand, there are people that understand the blessing of honor. And, you know, you said something today. Well, look, when we go into other countries, right. you notice that, don't you? You know, like when we first went into Trinidad, it's it's like they know how, as far as hospitality, and they know how to well, the honor other, others. The, the other thing is this, is sometimes we don't even have honor for our own country until we go to another country. And you oh. see that how things are there. So, you know, for everybody that talks about how horrible this country is, I just leave you a challenge. Leave. <laughs> go go someplace yeah. else and, and live there for a while and find out how blessed we really are here in America. That's right. Um, well, this all really just spurred from something that just happened this Saturday. Yeah. There was a uh, – Debbie's uncle served in the Korean War as a Marine. And our son was asking him, what, what made you choose the Marines? Because he volunteered. He said, what made you choose the Marines? And uh, her uncle said, his name was Bill. And he it's said, Uncle Bill. He said, I love the uniform. That, he that, said they had the best that, uniform. That, that, that dress blue uniform. But then our son began to find out his story. He, he loved the uniform, but he could never afford the uniform. Think about this. You had to buy your own uniform then. They didn't give it to you. He served with distinction in the Korean War. His, his uh, group or his regiment. his regiment, whatever it was called, <laughs> was the most highly decorated of any of the Marine regiments during that time. He, he was decorated. But he now he's how old? Eighty five. Eighty five years old and had never gotten dress blues. And I thought to myself, you know, it, it was a shame that the country he fought for couldn't honor him with those dress blues. Thankfully now my understanding is they do, that they give those dress blues to those young men and women that are serving the country. And when our son found out about it. He decided he wanted to make that happen for his great uncle. 
and started the search for those for that uniform and man I'm telling you he looked all over the place and they were able to finally get it together and they brought in a veteran from the Iraq war oh. and to or no it was the Vietnam war I think to present it to him and he was uh, you know I, I there's a whole uh, th there's a what's it I'm trying to say there there's a specific way that you have to do that you just can't present to a serviceman there was a way you had to do it and so the the officer that did the presentation met the requirements to be able to do yeah. that and they had gotten this for him and when they brought him out and they honored him at a uh big festival in Blodgett and brought Missouri. him forward and <clears throat> when they showed those dress blues he just well began when they to... slipped it on his hands his behind him they slipped it on his arms our son did yeah. and he saw the those the stripes. sleeves and he just kept saying he said oh holy cow holy cow <laughs> holy cow and it meant i mean he's 85 years old and this meant so much to him. He was he he was weeping. Look at that, eighty five years mean, old. Weeping <laughs> to the point that he he they said, "What do you have to say?" He said, "I can't say nothing." I, he was so choked up, and I'm telling you what a I, I I wished we could have been there to have seen that. But what a wonderful gift to be able to give to a man that had fought and served. And I'm telling you, his face was lit up from ear to ear. He was so, especially <laughs> when he put that uniform on and they had it tailored so that it fit him. He was so moved. He came out and he was smiling Riding real big. Riding the parade. <laughs> and he got to ride in the parade and everybody, you know, was just, uh, it was a very special day for but, him. But, you know, our son doesn't know we're, we're telling this tonight. But I, we saw the look in his face and just tears you know, just when he was telling us about it, that assignment that he felt, you know, that he was supposed to yeah. do that, he was so excited about it. And so he honored him, but there was just that joy of, and you know. And the whole thing is that when you show. celebration. When you honor others, God will bring that honor back to you. What you make happen for others, others. God will make happen Amen. for you. And you said something today that, you know, there are sometimes you, you see people that understand about honor. And we're not talking about uh, puffing somebody up or making them prideful, but it's just giving honor to whom honor is due. And so you said, you know, when you've been given what you've never had, you tend to appreciate what others have taken for granted. And so can you explain that? Well, the best way to explain it is if, you know, let me use myself, for example. Okay, so my father died when I was 15 years old. And I never really understood what a gift my father was to me and how valuable he was to me until I lost him. And then I saw others with their fathers and there was a longing for me to still have my father. My father never saw my wife, never saw my children, never saw yeah. his grandchildren. And so the, when sometimes people have that at their disposal and they just take parents for granted. And that's not something you want to do. Take it for someone that doesn't have them with him Honor anymore. thy father and thy mother. And, and, that thy days it, it's, uh, and so it's just, it, it's important. You know, when, when people come to this nation, and I've seen this happen, when people come to this nation from other lands and they've never tasted freedom, they've lived under dictatorships and and they, they've they not known what it is to experience freedom. They have such a a high regard for this nation. And I, I think about, you know, we talk about, you know, well, there, and it's not like America's perfect, right? But I don't see anybody trying to break down borders to get into any other nation. And so right. the, this nation is known throughout the world and people long to come here they honor a lot of what we're taking for granted. Well, I came across this quote today, and it says that uh, no person was ever honored for what he received. Honor has been the reward for what he gave. And that's Calvin Coolidge. Wow. 
think and, about that. Yeah, and I, I told Rick today, I, I said, I came across this good quote, and I quoted to him. I said, <laughs> now, this man's name sounds real familiar, Calvin Coolidge. He said, he's a president of this. <laughs> oh, he was? And she said, are you sure? <laughs> no, I said, yeah, I'm sure. I don't remember him so, in my day. Yeah, so he well, was he like, was before your day. Yeah, but don't you like that? 1923 to 1929. Okay, isn't that a good quote, though? Because it's excellent. no person was ever honored for what he received. Honor has been the reward for what he gave. And so when you give of yourself, I think about the, you know, recently, well, it's been a few years ago. Now there was a uh, film that was done in a battle in World War II. I think it was called Hacksaw Ridge or something like that. And it was a true story about a man that refused to carry a weapon during the war. He didn't believe in killing and, and you know, and he, he, he got, he suffered such ridicule from everyone. But that day when people were being cut down, that man risked his life and he crawled through that battlefield and he pulled 70, I believe it was 73 men off of that battlefield and saved their lives while the enemy was still yeah. up there and he's under fire. And I'm telling you that they honored him for what he did. And he didn't do it for that. No, you know, when he, it's true, he, he it's, just, it it's was in just, your heart, yeah. you know, to help. He wasn't doing it for a medal. He was doing it because he loved those men. He, yes. he wanted them to live and he did ever, he risked his life to make sure that they do. So, um, what about, you know, talking about risking lives. There's a story in scripture about the King's name as a Hasherus. And Mordecai finds out is is Ahasuerus marries Esther, which is a Jewish girl. Mordecai is her, I believe it's her cousin. It's her cousin. And he he is he he discovers a plot that some of his men plan to kill the king, and so he got word to Esther and. They, she let the king know and they made an investigation and found out it was true and those men were put to death, but nothing was ever done for Mordecai. And then Haman comes along, a man that loved honor. He was prideful. But he did nothing for it. He wanted it, but he did nothing for it. And so he decides because, ha or because Mordecai won't bow down when he comes by, he plots a way to destroy not just Mordecai, but all of his people. Haman goes to the king and he's that that night he's going to ask to be able to hang Mordecai on a gallows but that night the king couldn't sleep mm. and he started he had them bring the record of the kingdom and they read about Mordecai saving his life revealing that plot wow. and the king said well what was done to honor him and they said nothing's been done for him <laughs> So when Haman walked in, he looked at Haman and he said, what should be done to the man that the king delights to honor? And Haman so stuck on himself that he thinks he's the one that the king yeah. wants to delight to honor. And he said, get the highest official and, and put the king's crown on that person's head and wrap his robe around him and put him on the king's horse and let that high official lead him through town and say, this is what happens to the man that the yeah. king delights to honor. And the king looked at him. He said, that's great. I want you to do it right now. You go take my crown <laughs> and my robe and get my horse and go to Mordecai and put it on him and lead him through town. I'm telling you, when the devil is trying to destroy you, God will lift you up. That's right. You don't have to worry about being forgotten. Yes. He's faithful. He does not forget your labor of love. God will remember and honor. Well, Proverbs 29 and 23 said, A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. So that's who God likes to you know, delight Amen. in. You know, I want God to delight in me. It's not like you want you know, just, oh, please honor me. But how do we honor God? You know, when you well, think about he saved, he, he saved his life. He honored him because he saved his life. Exactly. And he didn't do it for a crown. He did it because he was loyal. Yes. What we do for God, we don't do because we're wanting to, we don't give to get, you know, some That's people right. have kind of polluted what giving is all about. And they've made it sound like some type of a gimmick. That's not why we give. That's not why we give tithing or offering. We're not, we're not running some gaming system or something. 
we're doing it to honor God. That's right. And there's just a natural process is that when you honor God, God honors you. Well, how do we honor the Lord? You know, one is, of course, our worship, our adoration. Absolutely. You know, that's, that's honoring God. That's giving something to him, right? You know, how, what can we give to God? And it's when we honor him and, you the, know, we, the, we revere him, we, we love on him, we adore him, that gives honor. The scripture says that he inhabits the praise of his people. That word inhabit in Hebrew means to dwell in, that he moves in them. He settles down. Yes. He sets down in our praise and our worship. And when we give that to him... We're honoring him. And how could we not give it to him? He's been so good to us. He's, he saved our lives. And so we want to honor him. One, the other one is giving. You know, he says, honor the Lord with your um, substance. Wait a minute. Honor, honor the Lord with, your, with the first fruits of your increase. Something like that. <laughs> but it's, <The> scripture. <laughs> Look, wait if, minute, you, I can't if you know anything it. about scripture Here it at all, is. you... Okay, wait, go ahead. honor the Lord with your <laughs> substance. And with the first fruits of all your increases. So that's a way we honor him is we through our, our giving. Right. Here's the thing is we don't tip God. We don't. God's <laughs> not good. a waiter. That's good. You know, coming and, 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 you know, giving us all we need and making sure our table's full. And here we, we're going to leave you a 10% tip. Matter of fact, we give waiters more than we give God. But what I'm saying is this, is that we, we give God what he's already given us. And we do that with our first fruit, and so that honors him. And when when we honor God, God, oh, he, he he said, think about us. this. Think about this. God, th this he challenges us in Scripture. Mm -hmm. In the Book of Hosea, he says, he he, he or rather Malachi. Malachi, he makes a Please. statement, and he said, "Try me, and see if I won't open up the windows of heaven." and pour out to you a blessing you cannot contain. He was talking Luke. about in their giving. And so when they, they gave, he said, I'm going to give back to you. And the gospel says, Luke, press yeah. down, shaking, press down, heat together, together, and shaking together, and running over. Well, um, the other way is you honor God by honoring others. I mean, that's, that's what his word says. And, you know, um, it said that uh, honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, and honor the king. And when he says to honor preferring one another, that means to lead the way for others. So that's how we honor him. And, you know, in Isaiah 58, the people were saying, you know, they didn't understand that God, well, I'll just, I just want to, just read, you know, it would that, help if you get those scriptures in order. Huh? I know. What happened? <laughs> says, they say to honor you, we had special days. They're, they're, they're saying this to God. To honor you, look, we had special days of fasting, but you didn't see. We humbled ourselves to honor you, but you didn't notice. You know, and, and this God is, responds to him. Yeah, God responds to him and says, you do what pleases yourselves in these special days. And you, you know, and so he, he just lets him know. But then he said, but look, this is the fast that I have chosen for you. In other words, this is how you honor me. And he goes on to say, you loose the bands of wickedness. Let the oppressed go free. You give your bread to the hungry. And so then he, he says, when you do this, you'll be like a watered garden. You know, your, your uh, light will break forth in the morning and, you know, um, you'll be called the repairer of the breach. And so that's what he's saying. When you honor others, when you, even when you give, when you acknowledge them, you're giving to me. And so I just thought that was just really, well, really Paul special. Well, Paul talks about it in the book of Philippians when he said, he makes a statement. I'm just going to put it in plain English. It's the fourth chapter. And he talks about, he said, I'm not trying to get something from you. I'm trying to get something to you. In other words, what Paul is saying is this. He's saying, you know, when when we call on God, he said, that, he said, that way you have fruit to your account. In other words, if we're not giving to God, if we're not giving our worship, if we're not giving of our time, of our finances, then we, when we go to call on God, it's like taking a passbook to a bank and it's empty. Hmm. But when we honor God, that's why Paul's saying, he said, I'm not, I, I'm not trying to get something from you. I'm trying to get it to you. I want you to understand what this does. And so tonight, that's what I, my prayer is, is that you understand that these things are not empty acts. These are when you worship God, and, and people may make fun of you for worshiping God. They, they, your, your friends may laugh at you, but let them laugh because you, my friend, are building an account up. God is hearing you. 
He's seen what you're doing, and he will not forget the honor that you've right. shown him. Psalms 91, 14 and through 15 says, because this is God speaking, because he has set his love upon me, because he's honored me. Therefore, will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And this is how he's one way to honor them. He said, with long life, I will, will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. That's God's honor Amen. upon his children. You know, during uh, a few years ago, I had the, honor. had the honor of being able to do a funeral of a World War II veteran. His name was Chuck Gregerson. He attended church here. His daughter was Karen Smith. She's still with us, and they'd been long standing members of the church. Chuck, and I want you to see him as a young man. And That's not Chuck. Oh, that's not. No, 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 <laughs> sorry, sorry. That's not Chuck. Here's Chuck. That's Chuck. Okay. Handsome man. Uh, so he served during World War II, and I, when his daughter was letting me go through some things because I wanted to be able to, you know, share about his life, and I thought, well, maybe if I can find, I need you to run and grab my iPad, please, I'm sorry. I, I thought, well, maybe I could find something, and I came across a letter. I want you to think about this. When we talk about honor, this letter was written to him by a prisoner of war, a German prisoner of war that he had guarded, and Chuck had treated that man with such dignity and, and had shown him respect and that man could not fathom it. And he, 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 you can hear it in this letter that he wrote. I, I want to read this, and I want you to hear his words. Because Chuck had guarded him, and then Chuck got moved, and now he's trying to find him. So listen to the words of his letter. Remember, well, this, the man. Is, this is, oh, was that the man? This is the German. Oh, okay, yes. I didn't realize that. Okay. Yeah. So he writes... And he says, Dear Gregerson, you have moved from here so fast that I didn't know about this fact. I could not give you a salute on your way. Therefore, I have given your comrade my address, hoping it could be possible to get a letter from you after this war and begin a, and begin a good correspondence. Today, I have the opportunity for both of your comrades have come back for a night. So I send with them this letter but I'm afraid that there is no news or nothing to report of who would find your line since you have gone from here. Wow. We nearly march every day, so I cannot find the same persons as was with the first four of you. I'm hoping that you are very well and hoping that you have survived the heavy losses of this war. So have a happy life with your wife. I send you today a very hearty salute. Your friend, Langaros. Wow. I thought about that. I thought, man, this guy, he salutes him. Do you understand what an honor that is? That because you typically salute a superior officer. And he's saluting Chuck. He said, I give you a hearty salute. Chuck had had such an impact on that man's life. Yes. And he wanted to honor him. Chuck had shown him what it meant to be a man of God, to to show the love of God. Yes. And I'm telling you, think about that. A, a, a man that he fought against, a, yes. a, nations that were at war. Yes. But in that moment when those two men were together, oh, wow. something unusual happened. And Chuck's heart came shining out of that event and caused that man to totally have a different opinion of of America and of him and, and to the point that he wanted to befriend him. He's giving him a hearty salute. He wants him to know how much he values his friendship, hoping and praying that he came out of the war and that he has a happy life with his wife and He's children. That's special. Thought, Man, that's my friend. That's honor to the third degree. That's, that, that's just an honor to have someone speak that of you, to feel that way about you in the time of war, 
It's, it's undescribable. Revelations 4 and 11 says, You are worthy, O Lord our God, to receive glory and honor. Look, it's all the glory and all the honor and power goes to our God. It says, For you created all things, and they exist because you created what you pleased. And so what it is is demonstrating God's love. You know, when we demonstrate honor, it's demonstrating His love and letting his light shine through us to others. When, when we show honor to God, we're acknowledging and letting him know that we understand that it's you that's made us, and not what the scripture said, not and not we, we ourselves. ourselves. For we're the sheep of his pastor. What a wonderful feeling to have a shepherd that loves us, that cares for us, and that wants the very best for us. So tonight, let's honor him together. Can we do that? Amen. Father, we come Thank to you Jesus. right now, and we just tell you we love you, we praise you, and we honor you, God. Lord, without you, Father, we have nothing. Had it not been for you, I wouldn't be here today. Had it not been for your love that you demonstrated through yes. your son, I have no hope for eternal life. But because of your great love for us, God, we feel that and we experience it and we honor you. you help us to do it in tangible ways. God, not just with lip service, but help us to do it in the way that we live our life. Father, when yes. we live our life for you and we love one another, that's a life that's well-pleasing to you. So we just ask you tonight, Thank God, you, to receive our worship, to know that from our hearts, we don't have words to let you know how important you are and how much we need thank you. you so we thank you and give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you guys. We love you all. Hope you have a great evening. See we'll you see tomorrow. you next time. Bye-bye.